I was at the restaurant and just going and saying hi to everybody. And every, I saw that everything was ordered. So they were like, oh, go ahead, eat. Everything's ordered. Don't worry about ordering anything. And knowing that I'm allergic to peanuts, I decided to eat dumplings or pick the steamed dumplings because the fact that they're steamed, they're not, uh, there's no peanut sauce. It's not fried in peanut oil. My last memory of the night was we took a group picture. And then after that, I don't remember anything else. When I first heard about this patient, I was actually just coming in to start a shift at 10 p.m. I was taking over for the doctor who was going off and he said, hold everything. We got a sick patient coming in. Let's get ready for this and then I'll tell you about everything else that's been going on. Uh, so he said, it's a bad peanut allergy. That's all I really know. And this guy's unresponsive and he's not breathing on his own anymore. When a patient's this sick, there's no time to waste. Uh, he had already received adrenaline. He had received the mechanical ventilator. He'd received paralytics and was having everything that we could possibly do to try to help him breathe. And unfortunately, it wasn't working. Right there, fill me up. On a, on a, Venus, Venus, it's not as important if you don't need ECMO functions in such a way that you take blood out of the body, you run it through a complicated system with a filter uh, and with a pump to remove the CO2, the carbon dioxide from the hemoglobin, and to replace it with fresh oxygen that'll bind to the hemoglobin and then it goes back in to the patient. You put a needle in, you get venous blood back, you slide a wire through that, that's gonna be your track to slide your catheter over, but it needs a, uh, a bunch of serial dilations, and so he was using these just gigantic dilators to create this huge hole for this massive catheter uh, to go into this guy's body. My first memory is waking up and just looking around and wondering what happened. I had something in my neck, I uh, noticed that. So I started touching it, I was like, what is this? And then the nurses came in, and then Dr. Shaw came in, they started explaining everything to me. When I returned back to the hospital, about two days later, I came in and met Conrad for the first time. He was, at that point, still on the mechanical ventilator, but he was awake, he was interactive, he was communicating, he was writing notes, and it was the most joyous feeling you can possibly imagine to see this young man who had been so close to death now awake, alert, and able to enjoy his family. And to see him basically walk out and be a part of his family and be able to talk and walk and interact and, and basically be the same guy he was before he came in, it's just so exciting and it's, it's really what you live for in emergency medicine. Now I feel like I have two birthdays. My birthday when I was born and my birthday when I woke up in the hospital.